Folks, today the M3 MacBook Air was released and I do not have that copy because it doesn't come out till next week. But I did want to say that it has the same exact physical specs as the M2 MacBook Air and what I also have next to me that I'm recording off of or recording a voice memo off of is the M3 Max 14 inch model. So I wanted to do kind of a impromptu comparison between the two devices where you have the M2 MacBook Air weighing at 3.3 pounds at the 15 inch model, which is the one I have here. And then I have the M3 Max version of the 14 inch model that runs at 3.5 pounds. And I wanted to kind of go over the synthetic benchmarks that have already been released for the M3 chip. It is exactly the same that's going to be in the M2 MacBook Air or the M3 MacBook Air. And then also go over my thoughts of having both of these devices, the M2 MacBook Air as a longer daily driver. And then I just picked up this M3 Max version because I was getting some lag with the standard eight gigabyte, 256 gigabytes SSD with eight gigabytes RAM configuration. So that's what this video is gonna be talking about as an amateur YouTuber and someone who plays video games, but trying to get more into creating content as a full-time income stream. That's if you're in that boat or curious of learning more about these machines, that is what this video is going to cover. So one of the first things I want to talk about is the portability. So even though that the M3s are coming out in the 13 inch and 15 inch form factor, I picked this up at Best Buy for one nine 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 nine, almost a thousand dollars. And basically what you get is a 3.3 pound device. If you go with the 13 inch model, you get a 2.7 pound device, but I wanted the bigger real estate. And I think this is a comfortable um, position to purchase when the M3 model is now available. You can get the discounted M2 rate and they no longer sell the M1 MacBook Air, but I wanted to point out that in terms of weight, one being 3.6 pounds and this one being 3. Point, uh, this one being 3.6 pounds on the left, this M3 Max and the M3, M2 MacBook Air and M3 MacBook Air, or it's going to weigh at 3.3 pounds. I do think that there is a slight difference if you're um, really in tune with your weights that you could tell the difference, but I think that the real estate is pretty much the same with both these devices. Um, you just have to uh, really consider in the resolutions what you want to have between the two devices. Now in terms of port difference, I did want to talk about that the M2 MacBook Air and the M3 MacBook Air have the same chassis and they will both all have their ports on the left hand side which will be the MagSafe and two USB-C's while on the right side will have the headphone jack. So I wanted to also talk about with the M3 Max version, this is the different chassis than what you would get if you are comparing the M3 MacBook Air versus the M3 MacBook Pro. Again, this is the M2 MacBook Air model, but it's the same exact uh, configuration that you would get with the M3 chip that was just announced today. Keep in mind that the M3 MacBook Pro has difference than what I'm showing here in the M3 MacBook Pro with the M3 Max. The, <laughs> I know this is gonna be confusing, but bear with me. The M3 chip in the MacBook Pro has an HDMI and a uh, SD slot. It does not have the USB-C on this side, but then it has the same MagSafe and two USB-Cs with a headphone jack on this left side. Whereas if you um, get the M3 Pro or M3 Max version, which is what I'm showcasing here, you get an extra USB-C port on the right side. So keep that in mind when you're choosing between the devices. When you're with the M2 MacBook Air, you're not going to have all the USB-Cs where when you're on the 14 inch MacBook Pro, you will have, um, you know, uh, you will have the HDMI and SD card slot. So that could be a differentiation between if you want to go with the 15 inch or the MacBook Pro or even the uh, MacBook Air. There's a lot of decisions to be made here. And I think ultimately it comes down to which ports work best for you and what you want to accomplish. So that's it from the physical perspective. Now, if we go into the benchmarks, the only difference between the M2 and the M3 is the same difference that was in when they released the M3 MacBook Pro. For a reminder, they came out with the M3, the M3 Pro and the M3 Max all on this MacBook Pro chasis. 
Well, now they're just finally releasing and updating the M2 model chases in the exact same specs, same physical dimensions and ports, but now having the M3. Now there was one important thing that I do want to cover is that if you're deciding between, you know, you could get the M2 MacBook Air or the M3 MacBook Air, um, the M2 is discounted now at $999 and then previously it was discounted last month at Best Buy for $999, which is why I picked this up. I do want to mention that in the M3 chip, they do allow you to run two displays. I'm holding up two fingers, both two displays when you close the lid. So they're going to be releasing a patch software on the MacBook Pro M3 version. Now I have the M3 Max and I could display up to four displays. This device, which is the M2 MacBook Air, can only support up to one extra uh, monitor or desktop, even when it's closed. So basically Apple is, is stating that when you close the new M3 MacBook Air is you could drive two monitors, which has not been seen before. Well, I'm not sure if they're gonna do the same thing for the M2 MacBook Air, if it was a software limitation this whole time, but they are stating that the M3 MacBook Air will be able to support two desktops or two monitors, but you, you can only do it when it's a closed lid. So that's something to keep in mind as a, as a factor when choosing between these devices. One thing I do want to talk about is that this being the not the last time Apple's done this, but when they released the base model of this M2 MacBook Air and also the M3 MacBook Air, I expect with the eight gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabytes of SSD, you will see the drop in read and write space that was the big controversy when the M2 MacBook Air was released. Whereas the M1 MacBook Air, which is now discounted, but you could still probably pick up at Best Buy for maybe another year, um, it had a faster read write speeds because they used two NAND chips, whereas the M2 MacBook Air, and I expect the M3 MacBook Air to only use one. And so you would have a reduced read write. If that is something you're considering, um, that might be worth going, bumping up your spec to the M3 Pro or an M2 Pro, depending on what your budget calls for. Another thing to keep in mind is that with each iteration of the chip for going from M1 to M2 to M3, we can see that the Geekbench single score has improved um, year over year with the M1 and M2 getting around 2,400, but then the Geekbench single score of the M3 actually bumped up to 3,000. So this is the largest single core boost um, in its time where the M1 and M2 were marginal. If you're jumping up to the M3, um, that, that M3 MacBook Air has will beat out this M2 in single score speeds, which should help out with some gaming tasks or actually just compute where you can't use multi-compute. And then here I have the M3 Max, um, which shares the same single core uh, processing speed as the M3, but then of course gets beat when you go into the multi-core. So going into the Geekbench multi-core, this M2 MacBook Air has around 10,000 Geekbench score, but then with the M3, which was just announced today, the M3 MacBook Air, we could expect it to have around 12,000. So about a 20% increase from, you know, if you're choosing between the M2 MacBook Air and the M3 MacBook Air. One thing I also want to point out is that with the M2 MacBook Airs and M3 MacBook Airs going from a 13 inch to a 15 inch, they both are fanless, so you shouldn't see thermal throttling, but I do expect that the M3 MacBook Air to have better thermal performance because it's a smaller chip. Thus it would have on the MacBook Air body that has no fans, you could expect probably in my opinion to have a better sustained load over time. And I think other YouTubers have showcased that as well. Um, finally, if deciding between the M2 versus the M3, the M3 of course has ray tracing cores. So you could, if your workflow has, um, could take advantage of it or utilizes it, maybe perhaps in Blender, you'll see a drop in render times, you know, going from upwards of two minutes in Blender to using the ray tracing, uh, 10 cores in the M3, uh, that even this M3 Max has ray tracing to get down to about 40 seconds. So a big improvement if your workflow can take advantage of the ray tracing. So that's my take on the differences between the M3 and the M2. This of course, this M2 MacBook Air is gonna be in the same chases, 15 inch and 13 inch, no fans. I picked this up at Best Buy 15 inch 999. I realized that in doing Final Cut, I was running out of space, which is why I picked up the M3 Max. I'm testing this out to see if maybe I need to 
just switch over to Resolve because Final Cut was eating up a lot of SSD space. But what I do want to say is with the M3s coming out, if you do decide to order it, I think the difference could be worth it if you have a ray tracing uh, workflow and perhaps you're on Blender or your app has been updated to utilize the ray tracing cores, that could be a reason to picking it up. Otherwise, I expect this to be even cheaper at Best Buy or Amazon. Um, I picked this up for $9.99 a month ago and, you know, Apple is, is now has this priced at $9.99. So you could expect uh, the 15 inches, I think at $10.99. So you could expect that to be even better for um, your purchasing decision. Now, the other question is, do you want to pick up the M3 MacBook Pro? Because this M3 MacBook Pro has been out for almost like a couple months now. This, of course, is the M3 Max version that I'm testing. But if you wanted fans, if you wanted the HDMI and SD card slot, I think it could be a better buy. Even if you, if I go to the Apple store right now and compare the devices, the MacBook Air still comes at eight gigabytes RAM and uh, 256 gigabytes of SSD. Whereas if we go into the buy options, let me just go check real quick on the MacBook M2 MacBook Air, 14 inch M3, eight cores, 10 cores. Okay, so it's eight gigabytes RAM and 512 gigabytes. So double the SSD space runs at 1599. So that is, um, you know, I, I think you should be trying at this point to be bumping up to 16 gigabytes of RAM, or at least the 512 in the MacBook Pro chase is, is better because, um, like I said, I've been trying the eight gigabyte, 200, eight by 256 configuration that comes in the base model of this M2 MacBook Air, and it has not been um, able to keep up with some of my tasks, such as running out of space in Final Cut, and also, I use OBS to record meetings uh, for my full-time job. And I noticed that it was really lagging at one point during a Teams meeting. Uh, my brother thought it was over, but I couldn't close and I was unmuted. And I think he said some funny things that probably shouldn't have been said. But all that saying that sometimes the eight gigabytes um, or the eight gigabytes of RAM, I don't really care too much about swap memory, but it does impact performance sometimes. So that's something you may want to consider um, if you decide to skip the M2 uh, or the MacBook Air M2 or M3 model and go with the M3 model that is in the MacBook Pro. So that's kind of my high level takes of my thoughts on the M3 MacBook Air release. I expect some people to um, who are waiting out for the, for the M3 model to finally take the leap, especially if you came from the M1 MacBook Air. Um, and of course, I'm still testing this M3 Max, so um, if you have any questions or comments between these two devices I'm testing, leave a comment below. See you guys in the next video. Peace.